Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Jess Parnell, VP Security of Operations at Centripetal. Jess, it's a pleasure to be with you here today. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for uh, inviting me to come today. Certainly. So Jess, tons of talk about AI. We talk about AI, we talk about artificial intelligence intensely in the industry, but not so much talk about augmented intelligence. And I'm really interested and excited to have this conversation with you. And you know, let's start off with just getting to the bare bones of it. Why is AI being pushed so hard in the industry, literally from all facets of work life and business and security within industry? Yeah, it's uh, you can't even go to a conference today without hearing AI <laughs> as the opening act uh, from RSA, Black Hat, all these major conferences. Uh, AI is definitely the buzzword, <clears throat> and I feel like um, you know we're trying to make up that that workforce shortage that we're all uh, you know dear to. Um, I, I really feel that you know when I'm <clears throat> I'm out you know with. Um, out in the community and I'm, um, I'm doing some mentorship or I'm at, uh, you know, the local college here. And I always get this question where people are coming to me and asking like, well, Hey, you know, I'm trying to get into uh, cyber and, uh, and, you know, I, I've applied all over the place and, and I just, am, I'm not getting any response, right. You guys say that you need people, but you know, we don't <clears throat> not getting any response for these uh, entry level positions. And so I, my response to that is, yes, we are shorted. We have a massive shortage in uh, in workforce, but not at the entry level. Entry level is pretty solid. You can find people pretty easily that want to get into cyber. But where we're short is for the senior level uh, network defenders, right? And so that's where I think the AI <clears throat> is coming into play. It's helping people with low, lower skill levels to be at a, at a much higher um uh, level of uh, proficiency. It's the same thing that attackers are doing, right? You're taking attackers that maybe English isn't their native language. You pass it through the uh, you know, G chat GPT and you get native English speaking uh, emails and you know phishing attacks uh, become more uh, targeted or more um, clicked on because the, you know, the email kind of makes sense and things like that. So I think AI is a big deal for us <clears throat> because it's uh, it's helping elevate those uh, those junior positions to more senior uh, roles. Certainly. So let's just uh, touch on that for a moment. So you have some junior folks that come over to you and they say, look, we want to get into the industry. We've finished our education. We've done our internships. And now we're ready to work and we can't find a job. What can they do, action items, in order to get to the next level that they would be looked at as somebody to fill the shoes of the lack of the workforce that is uh, talking about the lack of uh, people and skill set in cybersecurity? Yeah, and and so this this happens too. You know, um, I have people that have graduated with degrees. They go out to the work, workforce, and they're expecting like six figure salaries right off the bat. And it's unfortunate it will come, <laughs> right? But the entry level positions they don't pay uh, that much initially. But you can probably get there if you're, uh, you know, if you're a quick learner. You, you work well within groups. Um, you demonstrate some leadership you can get into six figures probably within the first two years. Um, and that's pretty aggressive, right, for any uh, industry. But that is definitely possible. So to answer your question, I think there's a little bit of an unex like a <clears throat> unattainable expectation when people enter the workforce that they think they're going to get a massive uh, salary. And that's usually the entry level tier ones. Uh, it's not the case. But there is a big difference between the entry level and the medium or the tier two levels. So some of the action items also would be to... Uh, really network, join different groups, uh, let people know that you're willing to learn, really having those conversations that might not appear really on a resume, but face-to-face -face could really showcase somebody's potential that would be very appropriate to be on teams to really grow information. So, you know, the that's great. I mean, like uh, going to uh, some of the conferences, like uh, DEF CON is a huge, uh, you know, uh, event where you meet a lot of people. Um there's DEF CON community groups within major cities around the uh, country. I belong to one here in Atlanta. Um, getting out into the community, there's a, <clears throat> you know, Meetup has a, a lot of uh, opportunities to, to meet other people in the security profession. And that's it. You're right. That's another way to get into uh, and, and get into the industry is have, you know, work with people, meet people that are uh, looking or maybe you get hired as a peer. Right. And so uh, those are great ideas. So interestingly enough, the industry acknowledges an alternative option to AI. So can you explain that? What does that really mean? 
Yeah, so so for us, um, we kind of view uh, AI as augmented intelligence. So originally, the concept of a artificial intelligence is to replace an analyst. <clears throat> and um, and you know, a lot of people that are new to the industry, that's that sounds great, right? We have a shortage. Let's just replace them. Why even hire any new ones? Uh, but in what we're finding out is uh, augmented intelligence is really where it's at. That's that's what we're we're dealing with today. Uh, so people call it AI, but it's really helping people do a better job is really what it's doing, right? And so <clears throat> we view that as augmented intelligence. So you're taking that low skill, that entry level person, and you're elevating their game. And this is happening on both sides of the fence. It's atta attackers are elevating their game by using AI as well as uh, 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 analysts. And I just read a report the other day where uh, CISOs are leveraging AI to do better board meetings. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting as well. I certainly love that terminology, augmented um, intelligence. And I think that is so important for really the industry to wrap their arms around. As you mentioned, you know, people are looking at AI to help them with all sorts of tasks, but also are very wary of it, feeling that they'll be replaced by automation, AI, how it drives that, and how they are going to be no longer relevant in the community. So diving even further into that, are there specific skill sets or specific things beyond networking and joining groups that maybe entry level people or people within industry that might be more junior that say to themselves, I want to make a difference in the cybersecurity in the world, but you know what, I'm just not there yet. And I know that certain tasks are being helped by, you know, more senior folks with AI. So they really don't need me. How can I become relevant? Not just having the skill set, but what can I do? Yeah. And <clears throat> And, and so I've hired a lot of people in cyber and uh, one of the major uh, personality traits that I look for is, is the ability to work within groups, communication, right? Um, and so, yeah, AI is, uh, you know, it kind of scares people at those certain levels. Let me uh, just set the record straight. As of today, AI is not replacing people. Uh, it is helping people do a better job, right? <clears throat> and that's uh, that's really what I'm I've been to all these conferences and if you pull back the layers of what people are saying, and that's actually what they're doing, right? You're taking uh, uh, your entry level force, you're making them more advanced. You're taking more your more advanced people and you're making them experts in those industries. Um, learning <clears throat> the key concepts for AI, there's a lot of like, uh, you know, free, um, you know, uh, training out there. Um, Proofpoint uh, just uh, hit me up. We're, we're doing some, it's, it's an hour every other week get you the concepts. Uh, there are some great books on Amazon that you don't need a PhD to, to, uh, to read and understand. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there just to get caught, caught up on <clears throat> what AI is and how it's helping people. Um, but I would not fear that in, in, the, in, in your company or, or applying. Uh, this is something that is going to help you uh, pull those needles out of the haystacks, if you will. Um, and and help you shine, right? There's nothing more frustrating for an analyst to do is spend their entire day uh, going through logs or looking in their sim or doing their work, not finding thing and anything relevant at the end of the day, or finding things that are they perceive to be relevant, but then when they present it and do the research, are not relevant. And so, um, so that's what the uh, augmented intelligence is doing for us is helping our analysts uh, recognize what needs to be addressed in, 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 in a more timely fashion. So. so let's dive to the human perspective for a moment. We were talking the other day and you shared this really great story about going into, you know what, I'd like you to take it from there. Just really talk to the audience about your personal experience where you showed up in a company and what happened to you? <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so this so is much. pretty interesting. This is, yeah. uh, I, uh, I, I got a job, um, and my, my first major uh, cybersecurity job, and I was, I hired, I was hired as a uh, SOC manager for Health and Human Services, and so uh, went through the interview process, <clears throat> met the people, everything was great. I showed up the first day for work, and uh, and I realized that I only had half my staff. And when I started asking around, like, well, <clears throat> where is everybody? Why is everyone looking so doomed? They're like, well, you know, we fired half the people yesterday. And they chuckled and like, yeah, after we fired them, we, uh, we fired the SOC manager and here you are. And now it's your problem. <clears throat> and, uh, and that was, um, that was a challenge. Right. And uh, so we had to restaff and, and hire 
um, pretty quickly to reestablish a capability. And, um, and I was lucky I had had a good uh, team at the time uh, that were left over that actually were, were, were very talented. And we were able to hire enough people <clears throat> in enough time so that we could actually protect healthcare.gov when it came out. Um, and if people don't remember that, that was a, a very big challenge. We were the ones that protected it and kept it, kept it from getting hacked. Um, and so that was, uh, that was interesting times. And, uh, and it was, uh, it was, it was something to learn from. So when we were hiring that we didn't have, uh, everything that we needed. So we put together a requisition with, I call it kind of like a wish list, right? We want people to have four years of college. We want them to have, you know, CEH. We want them to have a SANS class. We want to have, you know, four years of practical experience. Well, what happened is, is <clears throat> industry at that time, we weren't getting these candidates, right? And so, um, so we were hiring the best we could from that pool. And so my, one of my, um, uh, one of my, uh, some of the advice I give uh, junior people is, when you're reviewing some of the requisitions for new positions, think of it as a wish list. This is what they want, right? <clears throat> and if you fill it, great, right? But if you don't, I would still encourage you to apply because at the end of the day, they have to hire somebody just as we did. <clears throat> you know, there wasn't very many people that we hired that fit every criteria that we wanted, right? But the number one that we did was <clears throat> the ability to work within teams, the ability to learn quickly. Um, the personality trait was a kind of a match for our organization. And so these things basically trump the the uh, lack of skills or the experience uh, often, right? And if so I again, just... apply. If you want the job, it seems interesting for you, uh, apply, do the interview. And during that interview, it probably, you know, it'll come out in the interview with that you're, you're maybe highly, not, not qualified for technically, but qualified uh, personally. So certainly. And, you know, there's some statistics out there and I want to touch upon what you mentioned about not having all qualifications that are listed for a job. You know, there were studies shown that let's say there were 10 qualifications for a specific job and you had a male and female who are both looking at those job sets. And let's say they both had seven of those job sets over 90% of males would apply and less than 50% of females would apply. So I'd like to, echo what you're saying to the people out there, it doesn't matter who you are. If you believe that you can do the job or learn how to do the job, definitely apply because putting your best foot forward and getting that face-to-face -face time will show your passion, will then make you more you know, make you more wanted for that job and you could fill the shoes better than somebody on a piece of paper who might qualify for everything. Yeah, for sure. And sure, that, that, I mean, that's a great point, right? So that's, that's tragic, right? Because what makes a good uh, defense is having uh, diversity in skills and experiences throughout life. <clears throat> it's that is a major, major factor in in defeating a lot of these uh, threats that we're facing today. And so it's kind of sad that if people don't feel like they're um, you know qualified and and less of a particular gender or don't apply. It's that's yeah. you're missing out. Definitely apply. People need people. They need to hire people at the end of the day. And uh, and and honestly when you put these requisitions together, it's a wish list. I'm the one that did it. <laughs> I'm the one pushing the wish list out there. These are things that we wanted to see in our candidates. Right. And I, I'm here to say that most of the people that we hire don't even have, you know, maybe uh, three quarters of that stuff. So, right. um, but, you know, again, apply, apply. Uh, apply. Personality traits will come out and, and prevail over the lack of technical experience. So certainly. And I, I do believe diversity of people yields diversity of thought and mind which in turn yields better security. So let's let's dive a little further. What do you believe is the future of augmented intelligence? Like looking just down the lens a number of years down the road. Yeah, I mean, you know, so so something that we're hit with now is we have a, a quite a few analysts and they all have, I call it style, right? And they all have their own unique styles or, you know, maybe you're, you know, in the news this week is the big MGM hack, right? So a lot of people are focused on that, right? And so we're all humans. We're all like, you know, have interest. We all get motivated in different ways. And so what happens is, is when we're focused in certain areas or we're studying uh, certain techniques and we're looking for those activities within our own networks, sometimes we might miss the easy stuff, right? The low hanging fruit. And so the augmented intelligence is kind of like that standardization, right? You're always going to be reminded like, hey, you know, this 
you know, just boring malware that you've seen a million times before that you have to address within a very short amount of time, you still address it, right? Even though you're learning about more advanced stuff, everyone, you get to a certain part of your career and you're like, you know, I'm tired of this like run of the mail malware that keeps getting through these VBA scripts and things like that. <clears throat> I want more advanced stuff. And so they spend all their time looking for this more advanced stuff. Meanwhile, you know, all this other, uh, you know, activity needs to be addressed, right? And so augmented intelligence for me as a manager uh, of analyst, it helps me sleep at night knowing that, you know, the the simple things are still being addressed, right? And so that's well, one all, major thing. Listen, I guess it all boils down also to human factors. You know, there's so many pieces that move very quickly. Think of it almost as that helping hand to help guide you through the little bits of noise that are annoying, but you need to think about them and not forget them or else you're going to have Big problems, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so anything else you'd like to share with our audience? Any last tidbits or thoughts or any type of security type hints or business tips that you might want to share with our audience as we uh, come to Yeah, so we, I think we were talking about this too uh, in the pre-talk. Uh, um, if you were the master of Windows XP hacks, you would have no work today, right? And so when you're getting into this industry, realize what you're getting into. You're getting into a dynamically changing environment and you have to continuously learn. That's something that's been instilled in me when I crossed over from IT to security is you have to be on top of these things, right? <clears throat> and it's okay. You don't have to know everything there is out there, right? But you have to be able to elevate your skills and continuously learn. You picked an industry, cybersecurity, which changes drastically year by year by year, even probably by minute, right? Uh, if that wasn't your initial thought process, you could go to accounting, right? <laughs> or finance. These things are relatively static. You get a four-year degree and you're, you're good for like 20 years, right? You're not good for 20 years after a cybersecurity degree in, uh, in this industry. Um, so that's something that uh, just instill and embrace. It's not, uh, it's something that I find the most proficient uh, people in our industry, they're continuously learning. They're always uh, learning. They're always learning. So uh, that's the biggest thing that I try to instill in in my people is to <clears throat> continuously evolve, keep uh, keep abreast at you know um, current events. Uh, we do stand ups every morning. We have current events that are uh, being uh, addressed every day. Um, and then you know. I, I like this new technology, this new term, uh, Sharon, I heard this at a conference recently, fail forward, right, is the other advice, right? If you're not, <clears throat> unfortunately, failing occasionally, then you're not trying, right? And so it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it, right? I was just going to say, so, make sure you learn from it. Don't keep failing forward. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like that. <laughs> If you keep failing the same way, that's not the point, right? The the point is to uh, to uh, to fail forward, it, to to definitely uh, you know uh, go forward. Uh, and 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 the other thing, the the other thing is eventually you'll you'll want to kind of spin off into a, a specialty, and those are <clears throat> I would pick that very carefully. Um, different motivations for different things, right? If you're looking for more money uh, or more recognition, or maybe you like to travel and speak and things like that. Uh, definitely take that all into account, and but a lot of times just take into your passion, right? Uh, that's usually where people uh, succeed the most. So. Certainly, that's that's great advice. Oh, Jess, thank you so much. I know I very much enjoyed this conversation, and I know our audience is going to enjoy this conversation. So, thank you for your time, and I look forward to speaking with you again soon. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.